Welcome, everyone. Um, this is Siamak Tavalai, and I have my colleague here. Yeah, my name is Jin Yun-ho. Jin yun um, We're going to split the time. Uh, I will talk about 10 minutes overall uh, what our product is and what CXL can do better for it. And uh, Jin Yun is going to talk about the overall effort that we have with partners and ecosystem developers across the world. Um, welcome. Uh, you know, uh, everybody has been talking about how AI is changing the landscape for memory. You went through the keynote speech today. Uh, by now, everybody knows that uh, the requirements for systems, if there are accelerators, networking devices, or memory, are growing very fast because uh, the expectations that we have of these artificial intelligence systems is growing. We are humans. Uh, our brains have developed for over a billion years. Uh, we expect similar uh, responses from AI. So for that, the size of the data to feed all of these computation elements is growing. And for that, smart people are developing memory uh, models, uh, algorithms, and uh, uh, AI models and high performance computing models that are variable. They are different in time. Every time, every six months, they change. They double the required number of bytes or data packets that they need. And they're coming from different uh, smart people. Different companies, different innovators are developing all of these models all at the same time. So, based on all of that, then we are providing bigger and bigger and more varied services on top of all of that. Okay, what does that all mean to memory? Uh, these computation elements are growing fast. They need to be fed by data, and data needs to come from sampled observations, need to come through the network, and eventually need to land on memory before it gets processed. So that's why we need more and more memory. Now, um, as systems are developing around AI, expectations of these solutions are getting bigger and bigger. Data sizes, instead of being 4K pages, they're getting into uh, 20 megabyte high resolution pictures or getting to uh, hundreds of megabytes of video frames for one minute. So basically, all in all, uh, the requirement for data is going up. It is not just static data. Data needs to come in, so it needs to be fast. So therefore, the requirement for the bandwidth to bring memory is going up as well. What we see is that um, capacity for high bandwidth memory is also uh, uh, required. Not only bandwidth, but also capacity. Okay, so what does all that mean? <laughs> What it means is that we're used to having a hierarchy of memory in the form of response time, basically latency, and capacity, and the, basically the ratio of all of that is a bandwidth requirement, how fast can things come in. So we basically have two tiers of uh, requirements, capacity tier requirement and bandwidth tier requirement. Now, traditionally, we have fed all of that using uh, solutions such as wide buses, DDR buses. And nowadays with HBM, high bandwidth memory, we're providing a lot of bandwidth. But because capacity requirements are growing, uh, we need other solutions. So for um, if we had high bandwidth devices, they are normally small and they need to be close to the computational elements. As you know, we sometimes trade off space for time. Um, when we want something to be done fast, we run them in parallel. Uh, because we want to run them in parallel, we need more space. So the interplay between time, space, and the energy required to do all of that is basically the physics of why we are here and what we are talking about. So 
<coughs> New technologies are coming. For example, CXL as an interconnect to memory that is adding the capability on bandwidth and on capacity. So that's where we can bring in memory, uh, more of it, closer to competition elements. Now, you, are, you, you have seen uh, specifications, you have presentations on CXL, so there's no need to go into that as far as the specification. All, all there's needed to say is that CXL has all the good attributes of being a successful technology. How? It is built on already uh, uh, understood PCI infrastructure. So it's already a good thing for it. First, do no harm. Then a lot of companies are joining uh, the consortium. More than 260 companies have joined already. And um, it is uh, taking up uh, work away from developers because it is consistent with the programming models that people need based on load store. So all of that are good attributes for a technology that can be successful. Now, what do we do with it at Samsung? We really believe in CXL success and more than just specifications, we are part of the CXL consortium. But more than the specifications, we have products. We have uh, gone all in with CXL connected memory modules. Another very important factor for a successful technology is for it to be easy to be plugged in into current servers, current systems. And for that, we have taken some standard form factors. For example, E3.S uh, is a form factor for uh, uh, CXL. DIMMs already are good solutions, so we know. Uh, on a memory module, a dim memory module, we can have 40 DRAM devices. And that's, that's a wonderful solution already. So to, to the extent that locally attached memory is satisfying the needs, we do have DIMMs. But when we need more than that, CXL comes in to help um, with expanding the space that we have to include uh, DRAM devices. And then for that, uh, Samsung has a number of product solutions. We will go through them one at a time. CMM-D, CXL memory module specifically for DRAM. CMM-H, H is for hybrid, is DRAM and flash, NAND flash. It is uh, targeted for tiered memory, CMM-H TM or targeted for persistent memory, PM. So uh, engineers within Samsung have done a tremendous good job of packing 80 DRAM devices on one standard module E3.S. With 80 DRAM devices, current technology of uh, 16 gigabits per, uh, per, per die or uh, uh, 32 gigabit per die, we can easily produce a module with 128 gigabytes of capacity or 256 uh, uh, gigabyte of capacity. What that means is with four of such modules in one normal server, we could have one terabyte of memory in addition to what you already have locally attached to uh, the CPU. Now, Another interesting technology here is to introduce not just DRAM, but also NAND flash as part of the memory hierarchy. Uh, in that case, um, CMM-H uh, 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 is suitable. An FPGA device translates uh, CXL cycles into what a uh, flash array requires and presents NAND flash uh, to the operating system as though it was DRAM. So it moves the data from flash into DRAM and DRAM is accessed by, by the CPU. So in that model, with uh, only 64 gigabytes of DRAM, uh, this package can introduce the equivalent of one terabyte uh, or up to two terabytes of uh, memory footprint to the operating system. So these are good for uh, large databases and solutions that uh, require a very large memory footprint. 
Now, another model for that is if we want DRAM for its properties, being responsive, low latency, high bandwidth, but we would like to have the persistence properties of that. In other words, non-volatile. So in that model, CXL can help uh, disassociate the requirements for um, uh, uh, DRAM uh, and battery backup, basically. Battery backup DRAM uh, controlled by the uh, FPGA device interface is CXL. So from the system point of view, it just looks like a load store DRAM solution, but the battery backup provides the persistence on that storage. So it can be a storage solution. Um, databases can benefit from that, and uh, we have a number of customers uh, for that. Now putting it all together, uh, Samsung is also working on a larger solution. Uh, we call it CMM-B for a box. So it's a, uh, a consolidated box of power and cooling and interface and interconnect that houses uh, several of these devices, could be um, CMM-D devices or CMM-H devices to provide up to six, 16 or 24 terabytes of memory. Now, the beauty of that is when we have a system that is standalone, you can have different processors or GPUs or accelerators plugged into that, or the underlying memory or medium could be uh, whatever makes sense. It could be DDR4, DDR5, or flash, or hybrid of those, and therefore that provides a very good um, um, uh, investment protection and uh, for, for multiple companies. So with all of that, I will give the floor back to Janin. He's going to tell us about the collaborations we've been doing with uh, our partners. Thank you, Siama. Hello, my name is Jin Eun So, head of the CXO System Architecture Group in Samsung Memory Division. It's my honor to share our cooperation status with industry partners at OCP. From now on, I will discuss success cases and future plans where Samsung collaborate with the industry ecosystem to demonstrate the value of CXL technology. First, let me introduce the SMRC, the Samsung Memory Research Center an OCP experience center located in Samsung Korea. SMRC is a compact data center where Samsung's customers and partners can collaborate. It offers an infrastructure that combines the rated server, network, and memory devices, providing a remote environment for the industry ecosystem to collaborate. For this collaboration, SMRC presents CXO reference architecture. At SMRC, Samsung's current and next generation memory products are available, enabling customers to evaluate their workload or services on the latest and industry-leading partner-backed infrastructure. These collaborations generate critical requirements for the participating partner's product, creating a virtuous cycle where these insights are integrated into product to maximize customer value. Currently, many customers, including SAP, Uber, Dell, and Synopsys, are developing various uses of CXL memory at SMRC. Software support is just as crucial as hardware reliability. To provide a reliable software environment for CXL devices, Samsung collaborated with Red Hat, a leader in enterprise Linux. In May, Samsung became the world's first company to receive CXL product certification from Red Hat. Additionally, in October, Samsung enabled CXL devices on Red Hat container product often shipped by developing operator software. This means you can use Samsung CXL devices in Red Hat open shipped container instances. In other words, customers can evaluate Samsung CXL devices certified on Red Hat Enterprise OS environment to ensure high data reliability. In cooperation with the industry ecosystem, Samsung is developing and refining the CXO reference architectures to ensure uh, customer experience. This architecture follows the CXO specifications with Gen 1 already developed as direct attached type and already in use by several customers and academic institutions. Gen 2, which is focuses on CXO tooling, is anticipated to be ready by early of 2025. Finally, Gen 3, which will expand into a fabric, 
is effective to be completed by the end of 2025. Regarding CXL uh, reference architecture Gen 1, we collaborate with Supermicro to co-develop a system based on a CPU that supports the CXL 1.1 spec. This platform supports the latest CXL enabled sub CPU and memory solution up to two terabyte DDR5. CXL memory is also provided either as an SI AIC card type on the board or up to four CXL E3.S card on the backplane offering more than one terabyte of CXL memory. Additionally, various peering and monitoring software such as rated interleaving based on Red Hat OS and Samsung SMDK are implemented in the software stack to effectively utilize CXL. This setup provides an optimal solution for customers to evaluate the bandwidth and capacity exp expansion effect of CXL memory without modifying their software code. Here's a customer success story using the CXL reference architecture Gen 1. Leg is a solution that solves the hallucination problem of a rigid language model. The fundamental computation of Leg is to extract similar vectors from the vector databases through the vector inner product, KNN or ANN. The vector database is a large scale terabyte class that cannot be loaded solely within CPU main memory. So performance degradation occurs due to the frequent stressing with SSDs. By adopting Samsung's CXL memory, the customer was able to process a lag in memory, resulting in 2.5x faster execution time compared to the existing DDR-only server system. In addition, various tiering techniques are being researched with Samsung to improve performance in lag application. Secondly, here is a performance improvement case in relational database management system. We are conducting joint research with major DB vendors on the use cases and value of CXL memory in DB applications. DB applications use various software base with cache structure to enhance performance. Among these, the cache layer, which typically uses relatively fast SSDs, was migrated to Samsung CXL memory devices without requiring any software code changes. Using CXL memory as the cache media instead of SSDs resulted in up to 2.6 times performance improvement in the TTCH benchmark. CXL reference architecture Gen 2 offers a memory pooling solution where multiple hosts can access the CXL memory pool through a switch. This approach provides customer applications with greater memory capacity and bandwidth than a single server form factor can support. Additionally, the solution minimizes the stranded memory, reducing customer TCO through efficient memory allocation and deallocation. The CXL reference architecture Gen 2 is expected to be ready by early of 2025. To build this CXL reference architecture Gen 2, a, switch, a CXL switch is required, and we are collaborating with partners like XCOM and H3P. The server CPUs utilize the Intel GNL and AMD Turing CPUs with the server systems being developed by Inspire and k The CXL reference architecture can expand memory up to 24 terabyte, which can be dynamically allocated to each host through the Fabling Manager. On the software side, we are developing our own Fabling Manager API and orchestration software following standard RESTful API and partnering with Red Hat to accelerate commercial solution development. Additionally, we are res researching RAS features in the memory pooling system. I believe that in-memory database can showcase the best performance gains in the CXL reference architecture Gen 2. We conducted a POC with SAP using a pre-developed system and confirmed a performance gain up to 32% in SAP HANA DB. This POC demonstrated the performance is still scalable in custom applications when CXL memory is extended with a switch. Reduction in customer TCO is an important collaboration focus for CXL reference architecture Gen 2. This decre the decrease in server purchases due to the employment of CXL memory box is critical proof point. Recent memory capacity and bandwidth bounded application performance will be enhanced by simply adopting the CXL memory pooling system. Cloud customers can increase the number of container instances without additional server system purchases. 
Samsung will validate this through customer collaboration using CXO Labon's architecture Gen2. Currently, we are conducting joint research with LabEP to enable the LabEP OS on the top of CXO Labon's architecture Gen2. Lastly, we have the CXO Labon's architecture Gen3. Currently, in development, is aiming to integrate with GPU fabric. The existing GPU is heavily burdened due to the limited memory capacity of a single device. CXL reference architecture Gen3 aims to alleviate this by supporting uh, direct load store operations, P2P -P transactions, and memory sharing. The basic concept is to design a structure where GPU cores share a large memory pool through a switch in the GPU fabric similar to MVLink and WeLink. This architecture also allows uh, for a direct access to network storage to prefetch data needed by the CPU. Additionally, it serves as an optimal platform for realizing near memory processing technology. This setup not only provides substantial memory capacity, but also aggregated bandwidth to GPU core applications. As a result, data transfer energy measured in picojoule bit can be minimized. PNM technology can be implemented at the CXL switch level or the CXL memory controller level. GPU cores can share attached large memory and access the shared memory directly through load store operations. This is essential for providing terabyte scale LLM services enabling high quality, long context, large language model services at a low cost. Here's the expected use case for the CXL reference architecture Gen3. For LLM services, the model size is concerned, but the KB cache size caused by batch processing and long context is an even bigger issue. When the sequence length reaches 2048, the required case KB cache size cannot be served even the, with the latest GB200 GPU system. The CXL reference architecture Gen3 will eliminate this memory constraint enabling higher quality LLM services within a reasonable SLA time. Secondly, uh, there is a lag vector database use case. Storing a terabyte vector database on a GPU is challenging, and the data movement is required for LLM serving. By loading the lag database onto the CXL reference architecture Gen3 and incorporating process near memory technology, the GPU can focus solely on LLM serving. Since the amount of data that moves from lag reserve to the input of LLM is very small relative to vector database base size, the burden of the GPU fabric will decrease. Checkpoint storage is also a critical use case for the CXL reference architecture Gen3. By storing tens of terabytes of checkpoint in the CXL memory pool, it will reduce the burden of the GPU network, allowing the GPU system to focus solely on computation. Okay, call to action. Yeah, please, just bring your own workload to Samsung SMRC. Optimize your service using Samsung's CXL devices and reference architectures. We hope to develop uh, even better CXL devices and reference architectures as a result of this industry ecosystem collaboration. Thank you. Are any questions? We're here. Uh, we have uh, at least four or five minutes. Are you interested in um, memory, um, CXL, and solutions that Samsung is providing? Any future technologies you'd like to see us talk about next time? Curious, uh, thank you for the presentation. Um, Matt Bromage from ARM. Uh, what use cases do you guys see in memory pooling or other memory expansion uh, for shared memory? Mm, for example, uh, yeah, now, uh, for now, we are uh, researching the use of some CXA memory pooling, especially for the uh, memory sharing. Uh, so the, this, vendor, this customer is a BD vendor. So they are, uh, they are using some software-based cache coherence, uh, some, uh, some um, uh, software. So I think that the, the hardware-based memory sharing supported by the CXL 3.1, their problems, the software overhead will be eliminated. So they can 
reduce their PCO using the, this kind of same concept. That's our target. Uh, of course, as you know, uh, the answer also depends on use, use case and the medium that you, you select. <coughs> if, if the device is high capacity device, uh, for example, NAND flash device, but on CXL fabric, and the consumers of that, smaller processors, don't need that much capacity. Within the industry, we might build large modules but it would be nice for it to be subdivided, and that we have the name pooling for that. It's not shared, it's not concurrently shared, but different regions of the same device can be subdivided to other CPUs. That's a CXL memory pooling concept, as you know. But CXL, uh, we can extend that one to the memory sharing, as Janine suggested, in that model, we reduce the amount of time and complexity of moving data from one compute element to another compute element when they are not directly connected. If they are directly connected, well, have fun. But as later uh, uh, tomorrow, we will have diagrams on how large these systems are. And we cannot do all to all. We have to have switches in between in the form of a hierarchical topology. And each switch in that model could provide a conduit to memory. In that case, the uh, amount of time and energy required of moving data will be less. Mm -hmm. um, the microphone, please. Oh, go ahead. Oh. Yeah, well, what do you think about the uh, uh, SD-RAM with a native CXL interface? Sorry? Yes. Which RAM? Uh, right now, you have to use the bridge, right? The uh, CXL controller plug in the uh, DRAM. DRAM. DDR, right? Yeah. Um, so what do you think about the SD-RAM with a native CXL interface without controller, separate controller? Um, it, as you know, um, memory cells are very simple. So you either talk to them using a simple interface, such as high, low, high, low bit uh, uh, twiddling, DDR bus, for example, or if they are uh, more sophisticated and serialized, you have to have a media controller. So uh, OMI, for example, Open Capi Memory Interface was a solution. Fully buffered DIMM was a solution that has serial buses connecting to white buses. Now CXL is the de facto standard version of that. So you could think of the CXL controller as a media controller that goes to the native uh, method that the DRAM device or future emerging memory device needs and then abstracts that with a standard interface such as CXL protocol. So if you call it CXL controller or go call it a media controller, it's just semantics. Yeah, I understand. But what, what I'm trying to say is it will save the power because Saving power. To, yeah, because you have to convert to the DDR interface and the front DDR of interface course. convert to the CXL. Of course, you're right on. So um, the power consumption in that controller is non-zero. Yeah. So, um, but, but, but um, I totally understand that all of us want to reduce power consumption, reduce energy consumption. That's, that's a good thing we need to do. On the other hand, Compared to a GPU, compared to a large accelerator, um, power is so many cents per kilowatt hour. So if we can turn, consume power to value, people are okay with it. What's not okay is to provision power and not use it. Provision a GPU and not use it. Provision memory and not use it. So. In the way I have looked at the problem, power and cooling provisioning is for 20 year time, for 10 year time. You build a large system and it's, it's provisioned. Now us as engineers and technologists, our job is to fully use it for good. So turn all that power into something that's meaningful. If I put a controller in there, but that allows us 
to have a much bigger fan out to a larger memory array? Well, that reduces the amount of time that I need to run the application. Because it takes less time, I can turn the machine off when I don't need it. Therefore, I save power. OK. Thank you. You, you talked about uh, disaggregated memory, shared memory, or memory pooling inside the rack. What about deep disaggregation where you have maybe a rack full of uh, GPUs and some compute, some CPUs, talking to uh, a rack full of memory, fast memory, maybe 10 meters away? Do you see that happening, and, and when, possibly? Mm. Okay, yeah, that's a good question. Actually, as you know, the car park cable can uh, reach some you know, lag level. So our first op the approach is targeting some one lag distance. So as you told me, yeah, yeah, there are a lot of some challenges to far to reach to far away lag. So we think about some optical things and other things, but it's a, a little bit future story. So uh, we need to research about uh, uh, which is which is some technology will be better in the view of some performance and cost. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good question. Thank you. Yeah, one one of the trade-offs is time and space and complexity. <laughs> So for the value that you suggested comes complexity. Um, CXL specification allows for that. There are other interconnect technologies that allow for that as well. So depending on if it is a, a get put semantics, a bulk data movement, or load store semantics, a CXL can play a very good job. As a matter of fact, as Jinin suggested, with s the CXL switches that his box uh, offered, we could put that in a rack and cable it together it can, it can very well be done. But um, I normally talk about three uh, principles. First, do no harm. Just make sure it is backward compatible and software can run on it. And then um, put things where they belong. If it makes sense for everything to be in one's chassis, reduce the complexity of that, go do that. If, if we can benefit adding value, cabling it to something else and separating accelerators totally away from memory, because memory technology might change every two years, but accelerators change every six months. That is investment protection. Let's do that. But if it hurts, don't do that. In other words, if, if by adding all of this complexity, we're uh, uh, reducing reliability of the system, well, let's stop. Think about it. Find another way. Maybe last question. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm seeing there's delay from companies that making CXL switch, uh, especially for 3.1. I, I know that uh, you just focus on uh, memory expansion and memory pooling, but for memory copy uh, with uh, persistent memory, you need CXL 3.1. And I, I, I do you see that uh, the delay of vendor, IC vendor coming out with the CXL switch impact your product rollout? Okay, yeah, for the CXL switch, as well, yeah, we are working with some limited company, as well as the Xcon. I believe the Xcon is the uh, sole company to make some age version of the CXL switch. But problem, the, the, the PCIe, uh, the, the CXL switch is based on as well as the C PCIe switch. So many companies can make their own ASIC, of course. So that's the reason why the <coughs> we are trying to approve the CXL technology for our customer. So I know that some Broadcom and uh, some Cisco, uh, they have some planning to have some making their own ASIC at that time. So I believe that this echo will be increased uh, for CXL support. Okay, so I, I know I understand XCon has the CXL switch and also they can support PCIe for Gen 6. Uh, they currently have a uh, the Gen 5 and CXL 2.0, but then you think that uh, in the future, there are more adapter to make the, in the industry for OS from a CXL consortium, that they will make more um, switches. And if company don't have the switches available to you, then company can use their own ASIC or RPGA. Uh, as you know, we are technologists. We're working together and dream big, dream about what things can be done. 
and we work together and come up with specifications, writing it down. If you were to do it, do it this way so it is interoperable. CXL specification is an example. What comes next is realizing that one and uh, uh, realizing to practice. Uh, POCs are happening, uh, go on the show floor, you do see CSS switches, you do see CXL controllers, you plug them in, they work. Okay, so we, we, we covered maybe desirability, people want it, marketing uh, requirement for it, and we talked about physical implementation and um, uh, capability that the technology has. And then what's left is business viability. Does it make sense? Is it too expensive? Will people buy? Do you need it? Uh, what problem does it solve? And that's part of the uh, work that's going on. That's why we're working with a lot of uh, different uh, partners across the world um, to do POCs, measure, uh, review the results, look at the reliability marks, look at the performance marks, and assess if it makes sense or not. Thanks. I, I think like I hope it's not going to be like the opt-in from Intel. You have uh, they also have a proof of concept, but then the market is not ready to adopt it because they spend the money on uh, accelerator, and now CXL. Um, we seeing that it might be uh, delayed for another year or so. Uh, it, it's just uh, hard to predict the future, um, um, but certain attributes might be important to talk about. Um, a particular technology, if there's sole source from only one company, will have certain gathering. Uh, if a particular technology has over 260 companies participating, go on the show floor, you see a lot of different people are just testing out different things. If things are vibrant, if they're solving problems, you can predict that, hey, something good will come out of it. We're, we're banking on that. Thank you very much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.